They were then rained down on the dropping areas where the Dutch waited patiently. People collected it by whatever means were to hand. Amazingly, resistance reports said that so robust were the sacks that not more than an eighth of the supplies appeared lost in the direct drops of this allied manna from heaven. Liberator bombers joined the armada of fortresses flying low over the Dutch cities. The long-suffering and brave Dutch people now know that victory and liberation are at hand. Home news now, and train services will run as usual on VE Day, the date of which has still to be announced, although it will be a public holiday. Relief trains will be provided in the late evening for those returning home after the celebrations. But the London transport strike is spreading. Nearly 7,000 workers failed to report for duty this morning in protest over the new summer schedules. Cinemas across the country will be showing pictures of two-year-old Patricia Barney, who was kidnapped from her home in North London earlier this week. It's only the second time that Scotland Yard have used a cinema SOS of this kind. London stores are holding Summer Fashion Week starting next Monday. And it seems, as far as designers are concerned, that the war in Europe is over. Some people can't wait to slip into something more liberated. Since clothes rationing came in in June 1941, women have on average used 94% of their coupons, but fashion demands stamina. This week, women were reported to be queuing for three hours at 6 a.m. to pay up to 15 shillings for a pair of fully fashioned stockings that cost four and six before the war. Now, for the summer of 1945, the look is slimmer, more tailored perhaps a little less than flattering for those who've had to survive on a starchy wartime diet. But new fabrics, fibro, tricoline, gore, rayon, make fresh shapes, drapes and pleats possible. Even so, certain outfits still have an echo of the make, do and mend philosophy. Renovation patterns, showing how to recut old frocks, are doing brisk business. Women's fashion houses are working flat out, with waiting lists of up to eight months for a suit to meet the demand for homecoming outfits. Already shoe manufacturers are reporting a shortage of calf leather for shoe uppers, and of blue leather in particular, for those planning to be kitted out in patriotic red, white and blue. The Royal Academy's summer exhibition opens tomorrow and today at the private view more than £10,000 worth of paintings were sold. The centrepieces of the show are the new state portraits of the King and Queen painted by Gerald Kelly. Critics are saying that the portrait of Queen Elizabeth in her coronation robes isn't very flattering. It makes her look middle-aged, says one. Another points out the strange though traditional angle at which the King holds his scepter, like a fishing rod. Also attracting attention was Mr. Russell Flint's portrait of Vivian Lee as Cleopatra and nude by Harold Williamson, entitled Isabel Begins Her Day. It's thought the exhibition will become known as Victory Academy. And so the headlines again. This evening, General Montgomery took the surrender of the German armies of Northern Europe and General Eisenhower proclaimed that the German forces had been whipped on land, sea and in the air. Hitler's retreat at Berchtesgaden has been captured, but in Berlin there's no sign of his body. That was the news tonight, the 4th of May, 1945. Good night. <laughs>